Okay, hi! <laughs> Technical fun, yay. Hi, and welcome to the Comics Experience uh, Graphic Novel of the Month Club Kids Edition for the month of June. Um, and we've got a really great book here, um, a really fun book, uh, and one with a lot of heart and a lot of soul. And I loved it a lot. And the book is Miss Quincess. Quincess, Quincess. God, my son like was trying to drill me on this. Uh, and, and we're joined by the, by the author, Kat Ferrardo. How are you? Hi. Hello. I'm, I'm doing really great. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm doing excellent. Let me also mention right just here at the top that um, the, the book is also uh, in Spanish. So it's also in Senorita Quinces. It's in both versions, which is really cool. It's a simultaneous in both languages. I think that's super neat. Yeah, same, same. I am just like just in shock that it, it was even like a possibility to begin with. So yeah, yeah I'm very excited. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but let me do the first question. So I ask the same first question every time. So I don't want to break the, uh, I don't want to jinx it. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> the first question always is, is, is why comics of all the different things you could be doing, the ways you could express yourself. What, what is it about comics that, that attracts you, that makes you feel like you can communicate best in? Mm -hmm. That's comics. a really, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> Um, I think uh, since I was a kid, comics has always been a great medium for me to express myself. Um, I'm, I'm a visual person and I have a really hard time expressing myself. So for me, it just made sense to draw like an illustration of myself and just have a thought bubble or like word bubble to express what I'm thinking of. So for me, that always like felt very natural. Um, and it made sense that I would kind of pursue a career in, you know, making comics and, and such. So, yeah. Uh, for me, it just felt easy to do that. I don't know if that yeah. makes any sense. <laughs> no, it makes all the sense in the world. When uh, what was? I mean, it, have you the, 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 have you been <laughs> have you been asked? Uh, I'm drawing comics um, uh, your your whole life that as long as you can remember. Yeah. Um, so I was obsessed with manga um, when I was in middle school and elementary school. So for me, uh, I would create fan comics based on uh -huh. the stories I was like obsessed with at the moment. And so I would create my own characters like OCs and stuff. And it just made sense that I would just keep doing that. And I just kept doing that for like all the series until eventually I created my own series that I wanted, like, you know, just original idea. Um, and it, there were terrible ideas, but <laughs> it was fun for me at the moment, <laughs> even though they're, they're basically like a spoof off of like Dragon Ball Z or like, right. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Well, sure. That's, I mean, that's the way people start working, right? You know, you, you, you copy the things that you see and you, until you find the thing that's your own voice, you know, it's, that's really normal. And, uh, uh, it's, it's a cool thing about comics. Um, uh, what's the first comic that you remember, like that you really remember reading, not like some Archie comic that you read when you were two, but, uh, you know, the one that stuck with you, like, Oh, comics. Wow. This is neat. You know? <laughs> Ah, oh, you got me. I almost said Archie comics. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember my my older sister reading Archie comic like digests uh, comics yeah. and then just like passing it down to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it was actually um, the first time I picked up. Uh, it, it was called Angelic Layer, and it was a comic published by Clamp, or it was like one of the Clamp uh, comics, right. and it was published by Tokyo Pop at the at the yeah. time. And yeah. so for me, uh, it was just like very interesting story um it, i'm trying to remember what the, the idea was but basically it was about fighting dolls that kind of connect to these headsets that connect to your brain and so right. you have these like uh you know mechanical dolls that um fight and stuff and i thought that was just a genius like idea i've never seen a story like that before and, and that was the first time i was just like oh there's more stories made by this collective clamp uh, that are yeah. also like ingenious so then i started going to like this k-hole of like researching and figuring out what these and then like sailor moon and all these other um ideas or stories by them so uh, yeah, that was like the first series I like picked up. I was just like, "What is manga? This is amazing!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hev heavily into manga then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little too much, <laughs> but it was it was great. It it, it um, was my source of inspiration at the time because you know, I, uh, aside from uh, manga, I used to draw like. Um, Pokemon for like my my classmates because that's yeah. that was like my like uh, I guess entrepreneur like early entrepreneur where I would draw yeah. Pokemon for people and I would get like their lunch and an exchange or something so uh -huh. like uh -huh. um, aside from that it was just like oh 
this is manga. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh, I wonder if I can afford like this next volume coming up. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, that's cool. Um, uh, did you did you study art to to make comics? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I actually. Um, uh, so I went to an art high school that specialized in, you know, like arts, like performing arts, uh, visual mm -hmm. arts and stuff. And mm -hmm. I uh, did my, um, I, I was in the art department. And so I was kind of, um, I always knew I wanted to be an artist when I was young. So, but I didn't know what exactly. So for me, I was just like, okay, fine art. I want to be like Frida Kahlo or like Van yeah. Gogh. And so I, I did a lot of traditional stuff. And it right. wasn't until senior year of high school that, I picked up a volume of Jaime Hernandez's um, like Love and Rockets uh, series that I was just like, what is this? This uh -huh. is really cool. Like this is like kind of like Archie comics. Like that was my only reference and then manga, but not really. Right. So, right. Um, and I was just like, okay, how do I make a graphic novel? This is my first introduction to graphic novels. And I'm like, I want to make this. And so um, I applied to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. And that's when I had proper training of like doing sequential art and comics. Um, so I had like four years of that and it was really interesting. Yeah, I had a lot of like guidance from, you know, people who worked with Marvel as editors or as like um, artists or writers and kind mm -hmm. of let, like had that guidance um, to making like comics and graphic novels. So that was really cool. Yeah, no, S SVA has a really good, uh, a really good um, uh, comics program. Um, a, lot, a lot of good people teach there. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I I love that you discovered Jaime in high school and <laughs> and like that changed your path. That that's kind of really cool because you know Jaime kind of couldn't be further from manga, except he's also completely the same as manga in a way. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's an interesting um, like st stylistically there's there's just nothing in common, but uh, in terms of of, of the story and the characters and uh, stories that he tells forever with those characters, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And it was my first introduction to like uh, LGBTQ and like yeah. uh, Latina characters that wasn't uh -huh. just like stereotypical, like renditions of characters and series yeah. and stuff. So uh, I, I don't know, it was a very pivotal moment for me and I am very honored and, and glad to have come across that, that work because it really changed like, my my whole perspective on comics uh in general and just like oh what is indie comics what is diy what is like the punk scene and so yeah. it was just like very cool to kind of see and like read a series it's yeah i love the series so much <laughs> yeah no that's great that's great um the uh i now as far as i know before this book um the the your previous sort of widely published book uh was was um it was a descendants graphic novel yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah. so uh uh i wonder if if uh your experience you know sort of doing your own fan comics off of things you liked as a kid did that influence how you worked you know with with a with a licensed property kind of book like that that's a really good question i never really made the uh connection <laughs> That's really good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes sense though, because like, yeah, I was a fan of The Descendants, and so when I was yeah. asked, asked to like do the uh, the graphic novel novel adaption of the series, the book series, I was just like, yeah, like this is great. And then just like doing fan art, and yeah, yeah. I never really made that yeah. um, connection. But uh, it's actually a lot harder working with the licensing um, uh, series because there is. Um, they the the publisher wants to get everything correct for that series and they don't want anything to be um like like um they don't want everything to be canonical so you have to really be careful with how you uh draw certain characters and stuff and and so like for me i was a big fan of the series so i had like my rendition of like how this character would look like or how that character would look like and disney was like okay this is these are great and all but like let's stick to like the mold let's just you know try to make it as uh Make, make it look like the the actors as much as possible and so right. that was kind of like a struggle in itself but i i still had fun because i love the series and uh i had a good time <laughs> just like working on it but yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't think that was like a possible like that was sure gonna happen. <laughs> sure well when you're doing with likenesses especially it, it's like they've got to look a certain way mm -hmm. um uh did did they start telling you early enough in the process that by the end of the book you were drawing it the right way rather than having to redraw stuff? 
Oh my god, that sounds like a nightmare. Just like going back to like all the pages, redrawing everything. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, that, that did not happen. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, okay. We had we had like a few months of just like back and forth, like um, with like edits and revisions on like the character designs before yeah, yeah. we worked on the actual story. So they wanted Got to it. get that right first. Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. Oh man, man, I'm like sweating just like thinking about <laughs> the possibility of going back. <laughs> It's like 256 pages. I'm just like, that's a lot of pages. To edit. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, I was just, I was just talking to a cartoonist uh, last week. Um, uh, Anneli, what's her last Furmark. Um, and, and she was talking about how she doesn't write a script or anything. She just starts drawing the comics and and then she finds that she writes herself into corners or it's not working. So she has to just throw it away and start again. But that she oh literally God. starts with a blank page and nothing but a blank page oh and just God. sees where the day takes her. And I was right. like, wow, that's kind of insane. How much redrawing, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. I like kudos to like tackling comics in that like in that way, because I, yeah. I cannot. I have to have everything planned or else like I will have a. I'll be in hell just re-editing and redoing yeah. pages over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, comics are very work intensive, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. and I think that's, you know, one of the bigger challenges is that, you know, a page of art, if you're if you're really good, you can get a page done a day. But a, a lot of people can't. A lot of people takes three or four days to get a page done, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's what's your what's your speed like? How do you uh Oh, that uh, I guess it depends on the project. Um, yeah. For the Isle of the Lost, it was a, a longer process because it was like a licensing series. So like sure. um, it was a lot of back and forth on like um, getting things accurately. Um, yeah. But for Miss Keen says, I would say like the scripting uh, stage took about uh, I want to say like six months or a little bit more. I think. Okay. Um, Cause it was like my first time uh working on a story by myself um like yeah. writing the story and then just like working with the editor on that so that was really interesting and very long process um and then the penciling stage or it was thumbnails for like two or three months then penciling mm -hmm. took about uh i'm gonna say like six months ish and then inking was about five or four months and then the coloring process um i did not do uh I, we hired a colorist um uh for that and they're fantastic um yeah. marina aziz and uh -huh. they did all the coloring but uh if i did the coloring it definitely would take a lot more <laughs> a lot <Yeah>. more time <laughs> so if it took yeah. you six months to do the penciling uh mm -hmm. that's really roughly a page a day yeah. yeah yeah and that's if like you know everything goes according to schedule yeah. but if you're yeah. like you know you're you're sick for a week or something you're you're behind schedule and so it's just like two pages a day three pages a day and at some point i had to do like four to five pages a day at the yeah. very end and i'm just like yeah. Ooh, really yeah. really pushing it <laughs> yeah um so my normal my normal question here would be something along the lines of of you know where did the idea for this book come from i have to imagine this is at least somewhat autobiographical yes absolutely actually i have fix, um fictionalized in some fashion yes yeah uh, yeah it, it's a I, I like to call it a semi-autobiographical uh -huh, <laughs> which is uh -huh. a very long title yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's um actually we have a, a slide show and i think i have some like embarrassing uh quince photos in there as well <laughs> very good very good um but yeah this is based on um my own uh Quinces uh, and Quinceanera experience. And um, in the beginning, I wanted to create a autobio comic, but because all the characters are based off my family members, I didn't really feel comfortable um, doing that. Sure. So in the end, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to change some names. I'm going to change um, some of the characters around. And then I felt a little bit more comfortable with that. Yeah. But um, yeah, just like everything that most of the things that happened in the story happened uh, during my year of having a Quinceanera. So it's it's really funny how it just ended up that way. And then I get a lot of uh, readers come up to me and they're like, oh, you look exactly like the main character. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a reason for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 
it's supposed to be a semi uh, or is it supposed to be autobiography but it ended up being semi autobiographical yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> uh well, so I, I, I that makes me curious what do your parents you know or your family members say about the the book the book that's actually come out now oh they have, love have it. they looked at it have they read it <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, they have, <laughs> especially the Spanish yeah. version, because that was my yeah. issue uh, in the beginning, um, just making comics in general. Because I would create like auto, like autobiographical zines and stuff, and they couldn't mm -hmm. really read it because I my Engl my Spanish is not so great, uh, especially writing. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't really read my work. But this was the first time they were able to read my work, and they absolutely loved it. They, yeah, <laughs> they're very. That's, that's... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I said that's 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 very cool. Um, oh yeah. Uh... So flip a flip another page if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Well, let's. Can we just? Well, there's a book pages. Tell us. Tell us when to like when you want to start talking about something that we we've, we've got on the slideshow. Oh yeah. Um, so actually, this um, is a page uh, describing about because there's. So um, I'm actually very happy I get to work on a story that is based on experience because there's so many things about a quinceanera um, that a lot of people don't know about. So for example, this is a, this doll is called the last doll. And it's basically to represent the kind of like the, um, the childhood that the, the young girl is leaving behind to become a woman. And so she normally passes the doll to like a younger sibling or a younger um, like family member who's going to have their quince soon. And so for me, it was very important to have moments like this where you kind of show uh, things that I don't really see on TV, especially with like mainstream media, when they have quinceañeras on TV and movies and stuff, you don't really see the small details of certain items that is very significant in the ceremony itself. And so I had a really fun time researching and kind of explaining certain parts of the quinceañera that uh, like I grew up like knowing about, but not really knew like in depth, like the history behind it. So I love the research part of this book. It was really fun. <laughs> That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, I think there's uh, more pages coming up of just yeah, like, just yeah, just tell us say next, and then oh, okay. and, then just, <laughs> oh, well. and there's the embarrassing Quintanilla photos. Oh, <laughs> <Aww>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so just like my main character, uh, so Yapa, um, I did not want a quinces. I was like a tomboy goth uh, emo kid. I just loved wearing all black, and so just wearing essentially what was it, like a wedding dress, basically, uh, was not like my idea of a fun time <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and so this was me at the church um and then the, the photo right next to it is uh with my um like i guess uh, dancing partner which was one of my cousins and i think in the next slide oh that's all of my um like damas and tamalanes and they're basically my dance partners and so in the quinceanera um uh, ceremony we have like a dance and it's uh, I it's like a choreographed dance that we practice for many many weeks and it is not fun <laughs> just to like get a bunch of like you know tweens and teens getting together and trying to like get the down get the uh, dance down correctly and so yeah. this is a bunch of us um, and in in a tradition there's uh, I believe seven uh, boys and girls and that's supposed to represent the like makeup. Uh, 14 kids and then I become the 15. So it's just like a whole, it's part of like the, the symbolism of, of the ceremony. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think the next slide, uh, oh, uh, so the next slides are a bunch of um, concept art and um, it's, it's really interesting kind of thinking about the licensing work because uh, for these, these are actually very easy because these are just like original character designs. And so the only issue I had with the character designs with my um, editor was that uh, initially Suyapa, the main character, looked older. And I, I never really considered making um, middle grade books uh, at this point of, of my life. Mm. This was the first time I was working on one. So uh, mm -hmm. her designs were a bit older looking. And then that's when I had to learn a lot about the industry and like the books. Um, and the graphic novels for that target audience. And so I had to like kind of shrink her down to be more like, I guess, cutesy and uh, I guess relatable for the kids that are reading these stories. And so that was like right. a really interesting like lesson that I learned. Um, yeah, editors know she looked too old. 
<laughs> Even I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, it doesn't really look too old to me. That, that could be that's easily 15. I, I, I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was hesitant at first. I'm just like, okay, if the kids that are reading this are, you know, eight to 12 years old and they're reading about a, a adventures of a 15 year old, I'm just like, well, they relate to it. And my editor is like, yeah, they would totally relate to it because it's something that they're looking forward to, you know, like in the, in the next few years. And then when they actually do read it when they're 15, it's even more relatable because you're like, oh, this is like my age. Like this is, you know, yeah. I understand yeah. what this character is going through. And so I, I thought that was really interesting too, because before yeah. I just created like adult comics and self uh, autobio comics or self published yeah. comics uh, about myself and stuff. So I never really created work for kids until, until now. So. Yeah. I've always, I've always uh, held that for the most part, kids want to read up, you know, they, yeah. they, they want to read about, a couple of years older than to see what the next thing is, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they don't want to read about adults, but they want to read about older kids, um, which mm -hmm. I, I find, I find kind of cool and interesting. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And it, it kind of made me think back of the series that I read as a child too. And just like, Oh yeah. Like I always loved reading, you know, so-and-so series and it made sense that these kids were in their teens when I was like a preteen and I was just like obsessed with these stories. So yeah. yeah. Ooh, thumbnails. Amazing. Yeah, so this is the thumbnail sandwich that took me about like was it two or three months or something. Right. Um, and those are de those are detailed thumbnails. <laughs> Thank you. You you put a you put a lot of work into that clearly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was um, it was the first time I worked on a. Uh, so okay, so I did the the Owl Lost like the Descendants book, and I did the you know, the uh, the thumbnails and stuff and. For this book in particular, I really wanted to go out of the, you know, think out of the box and think about page layouts and panel layouts and stuff like that. So I had a lot of fun with this, but it was also like a lot of work. <laughs> so it just like took more time than than usual. But I do love the thumbnailing stage um, mm -hmm. and just getting that basic idea of what the page is going to look like. So I absolutely love this stage a lot. Yeah. Uh, so you see uh, the, the, the script comes first, though, for you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, with, like, so yeah. let me, let me, let's, we can just keep the thumbnails up for a minute here. Um, uh, let's talk about the, the scripting process because the book is bilingual. Mm -hmm. Did you write, did you write it in English? Did you, did you write it in English and Spanish at the same time? Did you write it first in English and then someone else did a pass on Spanish? Since you said that your Spanish wasn't very good, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just curious how how it how it uh, broke out. Yeah, so I uh, wrote the whole script in English, and there was some moments of um, of like words in Spanish that is very like um, uh, I guess uh, related to the dialect of Honduras. Because for me, it was a very important um, for the Spanish translations to have you know, certain Hondurism isms um, in there, because that's something I didn't really see a lot uh, growing up yeah. in like, you know, Spanish media and stuff. And yeah. so for me, um, you know, I wrote this, the script in Spanish, and then we pass it off to a translator. And then I had like notes there, just be like, hey, like, you know, make sure that when a character says, instead of like, you know, kid, like Nino, in Honduras, we say cipote. And so for me, that was like very important to have like little sprinkles of Hondurism isms in there. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we had someone else do the translation because my Spanish is like. <laughs> is it is it is it weird to to have a book simultaneously published in both languages, where you only wrote one of them? Hmm. Or weird weird's the wrong word. I I don't I don't mean to be uh, like, you know, I'm just I'm just wondering what that's like because that's, that's hmm. it seems like it's an interesting experience that only you have had essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, um, so we, in the beginning, before we did the translations during the planning stage, um, my editor and I were trying to figure out how to, how to translate certain things. Um, for example, in the English version, there's no, there's no, um, so for the main character, sorry, I'm gonna go back. The main character and her mom only speak Spanish because her mom only speaks in Spanish. And so I wanted to have that uh, struggle of the main character kind of, um, you know, having to practice her Spanish in order for her to 
talk to a whole crowd uh, for her quinceanera because that's part of tradition. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to have that in a story, but then at the same time, I want the reader to understand what is being said at the same time. So we had an idea of instead of having like brackets or, you know, like moments where uh, the character is saying something in Spanish and like, you know, it's said in Spanish, we had um, color coordination. Yeah. And so the English is in, you know, black font and then the Spanish is in blue font. And so that's yeah. for the reader to like, you know, understand, oh, once you was talking to her mom uh, in Spanish is in blue, and, yeah. you know. Um, so we had like a hard time, like figuring out if that's what kids would understand. But then I always forget that kids are very smart. And so they'll just pick that up really fast. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it was kind of interesting to kind of see that also in the Spanish version as well. Um, and I wonder how readers will take it in Spanish. I actually have no idea, <laughs> but hopefully and I, hadn't, I hadn't actually hadn't even thought about that, but it's, it's, it's reversed. It's reversed. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's cool. That's, that's yeah. Really cool. I just, I just didn't want to alienate uh, anyone when they're reading, you know, the English version and they have like Spanish, yeah. like sayings, especially if they're, half of the book is going to be in Spanish anyway, because, you know, it takes place in Honduras and, my family doesn't speak English at all. So that was like, you know, the isolating experience that Sue sure. had just, you know, that I had growing up. So I wanted, yeah, yeah. if that made any nice. sense. <laughs> nice. No, it makes a lot of sense. No, yeah. we'll, we'll, and we'll talk, we'll talk more about this in a minute. Let's, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Let, uh, let's see the next slide. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's, oh, yes. a that's your pencils then. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's my pencil. So I tried penciling on the computer and it did not feel right. I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For me, I, I, my pencils are very expressive. And so sometimes when I do that straight on the computer, it loses that like expressiveness. And so I like to do the traditional way of penciling um, and thumbnailing uh, traditionally and then like, you know, scan it and then ink it on the on the computer. Um, so are you how how uh, how big are you working? Are you working like one and a half times up? Uh, yeah, I think for, let's see, for the pencils, uh, I think it was like on computer paper, like 8.5 by 11. So yeah, it's not. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't like, I didn't like, you know. Uh, okay, so so you're not you're not drawing on, on traditional board then? No, 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 no yeah. Pencils. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So you're just using regular, regular 8.5 by 11 paper? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Yeah, and Pretty this good. was like a, an experiment because when I did, um, when I used, sorry, when I, made comics for anthologies and stuff, I usually work bigger and then like kind mm -hmm. of shrink it down because that's what I was taught to do. And like, you know, yeah. SVA, just like, because it looks better when you, you know, when you print it out. But for yeah. me, I wanted to experiment what it would look like if I were to scan it and then enlarge it on computer. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, it was, it was okay. <laughs> it was an okay experience. I just miss inking yeah. by, by hand. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you also, I mean, if you're, it, you can't really ink um, paper. Right? I mean, not. It, it's oh, not. Yeah, like computer paper. Yeah. Yeah. No, it would it would bleed. Um, yeah, it that's, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's why I thought. That's why I I penciled on computer paper because I'm just yeah. like, oh, it's, it's it's just computer yeah. paper. It's fine. Yeah. That's <laughs> interesting. No, that's I mean that's that's a that there's there's a million ways to work. It's what I love about comics. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> next. And then the yeah. next. Yeah. So these are the inked uh, that I did in computer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had uh, some some folks help me out with the lettering as well. Um, my partner Pablo Castro and my friend Dustin. Um, they both like um, so basically they did the the, the speech bubbles because um, I did not have time to do that while also like finishing the inks and stuff. And so they did that, um, and I'm immensely grateful because lettering is so hard. <laughs> it's so hard, so challenging. <laughs> uh, is this it, it, this is a font? Uh, obviously mm -hmm. is it a font based on your handwriting or yes is it a font based on my handwriting but in the end um scholastic had their own font uh that i'm actually really obsessed with <laughs> so they use that instead in, in the end um so it that's why the font here looks slightly different than yeah, yeah, yeah. the one they used mm -hmm. yeah next so Oh, the color. And these are the colors that my yeah. awesome, fabulous uh, colorist did. And yeah, they did such an incredible job. Uh, and it's funny because I am so used to doing everything by myself. Um, like, you know, when self-publishing, you are the writer, you're the, the, you know, the draftsman, you're the colorist. 
And working with another colorist on this was like really challenging because in the beginning, because I didn't want to let go of that role because it just felt like I had to be in charge of colors on top of like everything else. Um, but then when my editor sent me like the, the proofs of the, our colors like work, uh, I was like in love and I'm like, okay, it's in good hands. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> just like yeah. you do your thing. <laughs> I'll finish up the rest of the comic. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Next. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, uh, the story is based on, um, my family and my relationships with my family. And so this was kind of like a love letter to my abuelita too. Cause um, when I had my quinces uh, that same year, she passed away. And so I couldn't have my quinces and celebrate with her. So this is kind of like a love letter of, you know, what would have happened if she was there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very close to my heart. This the story. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I like that. Mm -hmm. Next. Oh, that's it. That's the last slide. Great. Oh, yes. The last slide. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> no, very good. Very good. Uh, I'm also, I'm told we, we have, we have an audience question. Um, and if anybody is sitting and watching at home, uh, put your questions in, um, in the comments and we'll get it asked for you. Um, it's Maya Henderson. Hello. My question is, were you working on any other big projects while drawing Miss Kinsess? If so, how do you balance your workload? Oh, hello, Maya. Hi, thanks for your question. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, so yeah, I was working on um, stories for anthologies at the same time and like freelance work and illustrations. So it was very hard to balance it both, especially if you're on a time crunch um, on your book. But for me, what really helped was kind of plan everything out like weeks before. And so like um, every morning I would have a ritual of just like, okay, get out my daily planner. What do I need to get that done that, that day? What do I need to get done that week? And kind of just plan accordingly. And sometimes that doesn't work out. And sometimes you have to work on the weekends so <laughs> and lose sleep. And so it's, it's challenging and I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but um, sometimes it's good to know ahead of time. Like for example, um, I know that my deadline for pencils is going to be in like three months. And so I have to see if I can, you know, uh, fit in freelance work um, by then, because I know during the inking stage, I cannot pick up any work because I am dedicated to inking and that takes mm -hmm. me the longest. And mm -hmm. so um, it's all about planning ahead as well, if that makes any sense, if that's very Make, helpful. I'm sorry. Makes all, all the sense in the world. It makes all it's the hard. sense in the world. It's hard, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I imagine it's especially hard, you know, going from doing self-published things where I imagine at least you're probably not doing stories longer than 30, 40 pages, if that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, to something that's 200 pages all the way through it. Not only is it a lot more work, it, mm -hmm. it, it's also a different kind of narrative, you know, mm -hmm. sustaining a story over a longer period of time. Yeah. And then you have to kind of figure out what your limit is as an illustrator and, uh, you know, like a business person. Cause yeah. you know, I have the tendency of saying yes to everything. And then like later on, you know, on when three deadlines are due on the same day and I'm just like, why do I do this to myself? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, I've been practicing the art of saying no and rejecting, you know, uh, projects as, as much as it hurts me because I love doing art and sometimes you just have to say no to some certain projects just so that you can meet deadlines. So yeah. it's hard. It's really hard. But, but you're lucky enough at this point where you're, you're just uh, doing art. You're, you're making every, your whole living from art. Um, so for a while I was, and then, um, I started picking up, um, you know, uh, work as an after school like art, uh, teacher. And so just still that's, like, that's still art. Yeah, it's still art. Art. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I guess that counts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's it's different than just being, you know, a solitary sure. like freelancer. Um, instead, yeah. you work with like a bunch of fourth and fifth graders who are screaming about Minecraft and doesn't want to, you know, do comics. And <laughs> so I'm yeah. just like, oh boy, that's a different uh, type of work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> uh so so let me so let me let's talk about the lettering just a little bit more, just because I. Mm -hmm. I'm a nerd who likes lettering. I, I, oh, I'm man. fascinated by it. Um, so, I so I have kind of letters. two questions, and one is, 
is do you do you think that the because the tradition in comics right is is that you use brackets or something like that to distinguish uh the language shifts um mm -hmm. uh do you think that the uh that the color shift is is a is a better way to do it um or or like what do you think what do you think of the results of this experiment i guess i think i think it worked for this story uh -huh. for sure because i know there's other stories that like you know in order for to express the like alienation that a character is going through in a different country it makes sense to not translate you know certain dialogue because then it just you if you don't understand the language you kind of feel what this character is going through as well yeah. and i think it works for those kind of stories but for this particular story uh i think it it worked well and i haven't had any complaints yet <laughs> so. yeah. no, i wasn't i wasn't complaining i was just curious because it's 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 the first time i've ever seen this particular technique used and i find it effective but I, I still think I find brackets more effective. But the reason mm -hmm. is, is because I've spent 40 years looking at comics, mm -hmm. you know, where it's brackets to, to designate that, you know, this is in the foreign language, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. or in a different language, I should say, rather than the foreign language. Um, right. Yeah. So. I, I, them, I also got my inspiration because I was an assistant to Peter Cooper for a bit. And yeah. so for his book Ruins, um, that's what he did when he when his uh, story took place in Mexico and, you know, there's characters learning Spanish as well. So he had some like uh, phrases in Spanish sprinkled throughout the story, but when the character themselves were gradually, you know, speaking Spanish themselves, uh, they had um, certain font in different colors. And so, and in different, um, you know, font uh, styles. And so I thought that was really cool. And that was definitely a huge inspiration for this story. I, I remember that now, now that you bring it up. Being an yeah. assistant to Peter Cooper must have been pretty cool. Yeah, it was It was really great. His studio was awesome and inspirational. And it was the first time I got to see um, a, a cartoonist in action when it comes to like doing graphic novels. Because, you know, uh, as a reader, you only see the end result or, you know, someone announcing that they're going to be working on a project, but you don't really see the process. And so yeah. being able to, to see that firsthand was very special and, and very cool. Yeah, especially because he's so innovative with color and and yeah. shape and technique, and uh, you know he, um, yeah, he he's 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 very innovative. I I I I admire his work a lot. That that must have been a neat person to uh, to to mentor under. Yeah, um, and then my other question about about lettering is again, this is purely out of curiosity. Um, the mixed case lettering. Um, where where it's you know uppercase for for the beginning of a sentence like a normal the way you would read a regular prose book in other words but that's right. again not very traditional in comics broadly um, mm -hmm. uh, was was that a choice that that you liked that you I guess so yeah I guess I didn't really think about that further <laughs> I think I just went with what was like natural and. <laughs> <laughs> I am I I admire letterists and, and their crafts uh yeah. so much because there's just so much thought and and like process to it that you don't really like question until you're at the you know the hot seat and you're like oh how do I write letter <laughs> like I don't know how to yeah. do this yeah. um so I, I just said what was like what, what felt natural to me at the moment and and yeah it's uh yeah that's a really good question <laughs> now I, I'm gonna well, question I, how I do it. <laughs> I, I mean, ideally, lettering's invisible, right? Like, ideally, yeah. you don't even notice the fact that there's lettering, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and and yet it determines so much of the thing. What about things like the like the little scratches and stuff? Did you did you hand draw those into the art, or are those are those a lettering layer? Uh, I did hand draw those. Yeah. Okay. And I kind of wish I did more elaborate versions of those, but like because yeah. of like time crunch, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna come back to it, and I never did. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> but they they look fine. But yeah, I um I think for the next book, I, I definitely want to go go all out and just like create you know elaborate ways of doing you know like sound effects and you know yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you actually right before your kids go through a a, a lice uh, breakout? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it was not fun. It was not that fun must have been rough. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just like one of those funny, you know, moments uh, that you kind of look back and reflect and just laugh about. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. And also no, I mean, I. You know, you... <laughs>
<laughs> Even in San Francisco public schools, they kept getting the lice. The kids would get lice, oh and you know, gosh, it's what, what I don't know why it only seems to really hit adult. I mean, kids. I I, I, I guess we just because they just touch, touch everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm exactly. surprised I haven't had a lice too. I'm just like always sitting on floors and stuff. So like yeah, even yeah. as an adult, I'm just like any day now. <laughs> Funny. All right. I'm so there's another question I am told uh from Kelly Morgan. Uh and and this is the question is actually from her daughter Kat, who is one of your eight-year-old fans. Um, what was your favorite part of making this book? Oh my God. Thank you so much for the question. Another cat. Awesome. <laughs> um, my favorite part of making this book. Oh, that's a really good question. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> I guess um, for me, I guess I have two parts of this question. So I, I love the, the penciling part. Penciling is always really fun uh, to do. And just like you get to, um, go crazy with the panels and, and kind of pose uh, characters doing certain things. So it just feels like you're a director. Um, and I, I just really love that feeling. But aside from that, like the, you know, the, uh, the method part, I also love doing research, um, the researching of, of just like what the quinceaneras, um, like ceremonial parts uh, mean um, in terms of just like, you know, uh, cultural significance and, and just like religious significance and and also just going back to my like photo albums when I was a, a quinceanera and you know when I was younger I you know did not look at those photo albums for years because I thought they were just like embarrassing so I'm just like no I don't want to be reminded of you know me putting on a dress and being uncomfortable for hours but um when I was doing research for this this book in particular, uh, going back to these photo albums was such a nice like walk down memory lane and made me appreciate, you know, having a quinces in the end because it's just like, oh, I can look at it fondly, fondly now and just be like, oh, I actually had fun. I remember, you know, even though I was very uncomfortable wearing this dress, I ended up being on the dance floor later that night. So I'm just like, oh, I had a great time. I don't know why I was like thinking it was very embarrassing. So it, it uh, yeah, I think that was I think that was my favorite part. Just going back to the photo albums, yeah. Nice. But, yeah. You, uh, I, I, I feel as though that you, you, got some sort of I don't know. Revenge is probably the wrong word, but that <laughs> that in that Sue gets to actually wear a dress that more reflects who she is, yeah. whereas you were all in white. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I was definitely projecting the kind of dress I definitely would have wanted if you know I had the option of having quinceanera. So I definitely would have loved to have like a a black dress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, her I, I liked her new her new look too. That she looked really good at the end. Um, Thank you. Uh, uh, what was I was going to ask something? What was I going to ask? I lost my train of thought there. Um, you don't remember what I was going to ask. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know what? So one of the things I, I just wanted to comment on, I, I really liked the way you rendered her panic attacks. Um, oh, thank you. Because yeah. I thought I thought it really stood out from the other parts of your of your art, and it mm -hmm. and it really had a tangible, like you could feel kind of the weight of it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I uh, so I actually had my first anxiety attack when I was celebrating my quinces, mm -hmm. just doing the the choreograph um, yeah. work and just like not being able to properly express what I wanted in Spanish and just so all the stress and build up kind of just fell apart and I was just like a panic attack and I'm like, what is yeah. this? I I don't know what's happening to me. And then my parents didn't know what was happening. So they had to take me to the hospital and we figured out later on it was a panic attack, but like that feeling, that visceral, like, like, you know, everything is just like closing in and I just yeah. feel like awful like that, you know, when I have a panic attack, that's what I imagine what it would look like if it was like shown around me. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's just uh, years of experience as being an anxious person. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I've, I've done some uh, work for anthologies before. Uh, this one anthology called Sweaty Palms, um, and it was an anthology about, you know, anxiety and how people tackle it and, and you know, what it feels like. And one of the work I created for it was how to, um, how to like deal with anxiety attacks and so yeah. different methods and stuff. But 
Um, I actually talked about um, having my first anxiety attack in that uh, comic I made, and it was uh, took place in Honduras for my quinceanera. And so right. the the effects I did, the, the the texture effects, was exactly the one I used in right. uh, Miss Quinces because that it just felt like that's how it translates in in art for me. Yeah, no, it was it was it was very very nice. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, I mean very not nice, but effective. It was very effective. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it made me feel it in the moment. Um, uh, how how did how, what was the process to to pitch the book? Did did mm -hmm. Scholastic find you? Did you find an agent first? Mm -hmm. I, I like how did it work for you? Mm, so I was very very lucky. Um, I I so I self-published uh, comics before and posted them online and that's how my agent um you know uh, found me and reached out to me and she's like yeah i want to i want to like work with you and let's you know let's make it happen and so my wonderful agent linda camacho is like a godsend she was able to um open doors for me in this um publishing industry because i had no idea like i can publish books or graphic novels i was just doing my own thing <laughs> like my own self published self published stuff um and and so yeah that was that was great and you know i had some editors um, reach out to me and ask if i wanted to create some some work uh, with them and i didn't know what i wanted to create uh, at the moment, I had some ideas for like YA or like adult stuff. And so I didn't think about doing stuff for middle grade. Um, right. And I was brainstorming ideas with them. And they're just like, oh, it's not there yet. Like, do you have anything else you want to, you know, like shoot? And I had Miss Quinces in the back of my head. And that was like, you know, I didn't think anyone wanted to read a, a Quintanilla story, um, especially a story like this. And so I was very reluctant to like share that story. And I was just like, okay, it's, it's my only one, like my last shot. I, I gotta like, you know, tell them this. And if they don't like it, then, you know, that's, that's it. That's the end of my heart career, I guess. Um, and I, and I told them the idea and they absolutely loved it. And this was before uh, I worked with my agent. And so when my agent reached out to me right after, and I told them, I told her like, yeah, there's an editor that wants to work with me and I have this story and I want to like, you know, work with them on like, what should I do? And then, you know, she helped me with the pitch process of having a pitch packet. And if anyone out there doesn't know what it is, it's basically, you create a sample, a sampler of what your comic is going to be like, what your book is going to be like. So you can have like, you know, the cover, what the cover is going to look like, what, you know, sample script, um, what the characters are going to look like, uh, sample pages of the comic itself. And so just to give the editor an idea of what it's going to look like. And you know, we worked together on creating this pitch packet for Miss Quinces. And then um, lo and behold, uh, a bunch of editors, I guess um, my my agent was talking to a bunch of people at the time and they wanted Miss Quinces for their like publishing um, houses. And eventually, uh, I don't know how this happened, but like all oh, thanks to Linda, cause she's amazing. But there was like a an art bid or a housing bid, a publishing bid. And so there was a right. bunch of, um, publishing houses that wanted to work with me. And then, you know, we, I think it was like a couple of days of, of that. It was like a, I think five house bid. I don't wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. Something like that. <laughs> that. That must've made you feel really, really great that, that like multiple people saw the value in what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was very surreal. Cause I mm -hmm. didn't think like, I didn't think anyone wanted to read the story to begin with. And so to have like, you know, uh, an idea that wasn't like, super well thought out and be like, this is what I want to do. Do, yeah. do, you, do you like it? And everyone's yeah. saying yes. I'm like, I'm doing something right, I guess. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, especially because, I mean, there's a point in in the back matter where you you talk about how you had, th there weren't, you weren't seeing characters like this. You weren't seeing stories like this. You weren't seeing your own life reflected. So mm -hmm. so to 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 be forward enough with yourself that you are putting your own story out there, even if it's only semi your own story. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then to have that many people, you know, go, yes, we want that. I, I that, that just, that's really heartwarming. I think, you know, <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I it's, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I didn't think it was even a possibility to begin with, but it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm still like shocked that it's even, a thing. <laughs> like, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And to end up, it's scholastic. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
So growing up, I could not afford <laughs> any of the books <laughs> like at the Scholastic Book Fairs. And so I would just like, you know, go with my friends and just like jealously look over <laughs> and just like admire all the books. Um, but yeah, just being able to have my book in Scholastic and the book yeah. fairs is just like a dream come true. And I, I love all their books, especially their graphic novels. So like this is honestly like a blessing just to have my book on the shelves with everyone else, especially like Raina's books and, and like Dave's books. I'm just like honored. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that's 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 really terrific. You know, especially as I say, in the both languages to, you know, I, I the 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 potential and the possibility for senorita in in schools and at book fairs i think is it's really exciting actually you know um because there's not a lot of there's, there's just not a lot of books like that out there i don't know i i think this is this is really great i i uh my hat's off to you now thank you no. it's all, all things to scholastic yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's only yeah, it's a, a blessing, and it be, be, being able to do school visits too, and meet these yeah. these like my readers, especially the Spanish speaking ones, and just yeah. them being able to see someone like them and from their culture, being able to create books. I I, I hope that leaves them like a you know long lasting impression of just they can do this as well. It just yeah, yeah I don't know, it's very special. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I think I think that's I think that's fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Did the uh, did the the what, it, I, assuming that it wasn't Scholastic who ha had originally shown interest in they just they ended up being the one who won the bid, but they weren't the mm -hmm. ones who. Okay. Yeah. All right. the, the the people who have who um, whoever it was that whichever publisher it was that had shown interest in. In, you know, originally that got you to make the pitch in the first place. Are mm -hmm. there like, do you, do you want to work with them at some point in the future? That's a weird question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I definitely do. I definitely do. Right. And I, I hope, I hope they're not mad that I went with Scholastic, but <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever going to be mad that you went with Scholastic. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, I would love to, and, you know, they, and they also um, create like YA books and stuff. And so I would love to venture into YA and, you know, older, older books as well. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's still possible. <laughs> do you have, uh, do you have your, your next thing planned out? Are you? Uh... Yeah. So I'm working on um, my next book, which is a sequel to Miss Keen says um, with Scholastic. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Especially since um, this was like a, a two book deal with uh, the, uh -huh. the whole publishing bit and stuff. And so uh -huh. I'm very, very excited to even be able to, to, follow up with Miss Keenses and, and yeah. And, um, and after that, I'm also trying to get some pitches out for, for, you know, other books as well. So I'm, fingers crossed it's going to be picked up. So, <laughs> all right. So let me ask you a question that you, you may not be able to answer this because the book hasn't actually been announced or et cetera yet, mm -hmm. but to the, the limits of your ability to actually answer this question, how do you do a sequel to a story that is very specifically about about one event. Mm -hmm. If you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I <laughs> say it without giving anything away? Um, it's it's more. I guess this next book is about Sue's journey. Um, so this first book is about her um, find, finding herself in tradition and. Yeah. you know, within family and stuff. The next book is about finding herself independently um, oh, okay. under different circumstances. Okay. So I hope that's enough. And yeah, then no, she has it's... fun in this series. So in this sure. new book. <laughs> sure. The, is is it, um, uh, It are you using Kinsis in the title? No. No. Okay. Because yeah, it so, wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Right. No. That's, I mean, that was kind of what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. So how are you going to? How are you going to connect the two books then? Mm -hmm. If you see what I mean, like from a from a marketing point of view, not that that's really your problem, but you know, this right. looks like looks like this, but the next one will have a different title. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, maybe the where the title is still under under works and I'm trying to find a way to connect the two. Like yeah, like you said, in okay. a marketing point of view. It, right. it'd be wise to to have that connected so 
Like, like ideally, the... you want it at least to be miss something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know. that that's what is happening right now. So yeah. okay. that's what okay. I'm, we're kind All of right. brainstorming about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How how far into it are you? Uh, so right now we're in the script script stage. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's still pretty early for you. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, super yeah. super early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, like another year and a half, two years before before it would come I would, out. Yeah, yeah. But but it, the thing is, um, once you worked on a book, you kind of learn from your mistakes and learn how to do the process uh, more efficiently. Sure. So hopefully, it won't take as much uh, time as Miss Keynes did. But sure. Yeah, it's it's uh, one of those things where just like I am not going to do that again. I, I learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. But you know, you still got to do the thumbnails and you still got to yeah. do the penciling, and it you know those are time intensive things. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Good, good work, fun work, but you know, not, uh, they're, they're not, you can't cut that much time off of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's mostly just like the small, the small mistakes. Like for example, I had a really hard time with continuity with clothes. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. she be wearing shorts in one uh, page and the next page is wearing pants. And my editor just like had a bunch of like, you know, uh, notes uh, on the on the like the, I guess the the proofs and just like changes changes and, and yeah, and I'm just like so embarrassed. I'm just like these are the basics. I should know this by now. But, <laughs> but I just like you know when you're in the moment, the creative. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sometimes I have to like jump between pages and like okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna work on this page like another day, but let me work on this big like splash page because I want to work on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just forget, but like now, like you know, I learned that I should have. Uh, like model sheets for certain chapters so that I can have a reference of it, you know, when I'm working on that chapter. And so like yeah. small things like that, you kind of learn. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, it's the, it's the difference between doing a short story and doing a 200 page book, you know, exactly. it, they, they, they demand different things, mm -hmm. uh, both mechanically and artistically, you know, mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Comics, comics are hard. But yeah, you learn, comics are hard. Learn. But they're worth it. They're worth it. You come up and you end up with this, you know, this lovely, beautiful book that, mm -hmm. you know, that is telling a story that's very personal to you that you're going to touch, you know, presumably, hopefully millions of, of young readers all around the country and around the world over the mm -hmm. next couple of years with it, especially because of Scholastic, you mm -hmm. know, um, I, I think it's great. So uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's a good book. It's it's got a lot of heart. Um, all right, so uh, we'll we'll wrap it up then. Um, uh, my my last question I, is also always the same. My first question is always the same. My last question is always the same. Um, and you already answered the "what else you got coming up" question. So, but so let's make the 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 real last question. The this is a series of interviews where we talk to a lot of people. Um, and so we get a lot of people who, who read these who want to make their own comics. Some of them are kids, you know, little kids. Some of them are adults, too. Um, if, if, you, if someone comes to you and goes, I want to make comics, but I'm, I'm just not sure, I'm not sure what I should do, um, mm -hmm. what would be the piece of advice that you would give? Be it, be it mechanical, be it philosophical, be it emotional... Mm -hmm. There's there's a wide range to answer there, so I'd I'd love to to hear what what's your advice for comics makers. I would say, don't let your inner critic stop you from from doing it. Um, just pick up a pencil and just start with a simple thing as a four page com or a four panel comic, and just be like, all right, I'm gonna you know have an idea for a comic, beginning, middle, and end, and then and when you're done with that, you made a comic. <laughs> So you don't right. have to like, yeah, do anything too elaborate, but like comics doesn't have to be perfect. So like, if you, if, you know, the thought of, uh, you know, having a perfect comic holds you back, like, don't worry about it. Like comics is a, is a breathing, like life form. Like it, it just, it's always evolving. It's always different. And the comics I did back in the day is so much different than the ones I did today. So like, I wouldn't have, I would not be in the position I am today if I didn't pick up the pencil and just like, you know, just create without any like, I don't know, worries or <laughs> hesitation. So um, I would say, yeah, uh, pick up any books like Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud or Making Comics by him. Um, 
drawing pictures, what is it? No, writing pictures and drawing words by Jessica Abel and Matt Madden. That was like my comics Bible uh, in SVA and it holds up to this day. So that is a great resource as well. Um, and yeah, you don't have to go to like school, <laughs> those fancy schools to make comics. You can just, just do it. <laughs> so uh, no idea is a terrible idea and no comic is terrible. You just gotta create it. So yeah, I don't know if that- I love it. I love advice. it. I love it. That's a great answer. That's a great <laughs> answer. I, uh, I I really want to thank you um, for spending the time with us uh, today. Of and thank you for we talked about me. this. And yeah, no, and and it's you know it's a I, I I've used heartwarming or something like that a couple of times now. I mean, it really is. It, it really <laughs> felt from the heart, and I and I I learned things. I you know I I love being a I love being a fifty five year old person who can still learn stuff. <laughs> uh you know uh and learn it from comics too you know my favorite media yeah um so so good 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 job buddy good job you did you did really well here thank, thank you, you so much. much um yeah uh put me back on a one if you would please thank you um so yeah if you are sitting at home and you don't know what to read or or what to do um i for sure would say this keen says is a great book and it's also available Senorita Quinces. Um, so you get it both ways. It's it's great. Um, it's really good. Um, I want to say that our next book, the next interview is on Wednesday. Um, and we've got Sass Millage, who uh, did this fantastic book, Mamo, or maybe it is Mamo. I don't know. And I will be asking Sass. Sass is in Australia. So um, that that's why... Uh, um, It'll be interesting. It, it'll be Thursday afternoon for SAS and Wednesday night for us. Um, and it, but it's a beautiful book and it's really smart. And even though it's not, uh, I mean, even though we picked it for the adult club and not the kids club, uh, a lot of you kids may actually like this. So that's a, another thought. Next month's um, kids book is Puppy Night. Oh, this book is fun. Um, it's it's really pretty and it's and it's very cartoony and. It's full of action and it's swell, and we'll be talking to um, to uh, to Michael Sweater and Jose Cruz uh, next next month. Ooh, it's shiny too, shiny. Um, that's really cool. Um, I would like to thank uh, I would like to thank Zoe for running the show today, especially stepping in uh, for Ben, who on Father's Day is not with his father. I love you anyway, son. Um, uh, and, and Zoe also is the manager of the store and keeps everything together for me, uh, along with Kat and, and, uh, Katie. And, uh, I, I love them so much and I couldn't do it without them. And I also thanks Jordan, who is, uh, our producer doing a lot of the backstage stuff for us. Uh, I want to thank all the members of the club, uh, that allow us to, to do this. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to, uh, join the club, uh, the, you can see there's ways to do it. You'll, you'll figure it out. Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for watching the show today. And I want to thank people like Kat who make comics. Put Kat back up on. Thank you, Kat. We couldn't do it without you. This would not exist without people like you making comics. So thank you. Yeah, for, for, thank you. for being thank you for here. Yeah. yeah, thank you yeah. for reading comics. This is yeah. amazing. <laughs> exactly. And everybody should read more comics, especially comics like Miss Keen says. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks very much for watching this episode of the Kids Graphic Novel of the Month Club. If you enjoyed what you were seeing, please uh, subscribe and hit the bell up in the corner. We'd like to invite you to join the club. Every month you'll get a great new book curated by our staff, and it's, it's a fantastic program. So please join. That address is running along the bottom right now. Thanks very much.